classification of these three choice models. Now, remember what classification is. We talked about regression in our previous lecture. So what is classification? In my introduction, I said the difference between them is actually very simple. When it comes to regression, the y variable is continuous. That's regression. And when it comes to classification, the y variable is discrete or categorical. So y variable is 0, 1, or 1, 2, 3, 4. Right? Right. Now, 1, 2, 3, 4 is just a number. It could, in reality, it could be whether you're, you know, you're trying to. So there are many things that could be classification problems. Is your credit card user going to default or not default? It's a 0, 1 question. Right? 1 being default, 0 being not default. Is your project? Uh, going to be successful, zero, one, okay? It's a classification problem. Uh, which product will consumer buy? Will consumer buy this car, that car, okay, or that car? Then that's a classification, because essentially the choice is discrete. There are only, let's say, 10 or 20 different models of car that consumer is considering, so predicting which one he, will, he or she will choose is a classification problem. Uh, which market would a firm enter? Does the firm enter you know, the, the Shaman market, the Shanghai market, which market does the firm actually choose to enter? That's also a classification problem because the, the amount of markets is discrete, right? It's limited. Uh, which political candidate will, will an individual vote for? Is it Republican, you know, Democrat, Independent, etc.? cetera? The, all, the, all of these things could be considered a classification problem. Of course, classification is a, is a term that comes from uh, data science, right? But we're just borrowing it. But the, the underlying, like I said in my introduction, the underlying principle and the methodology we're going to use are exactly the same. With a little bit twist. So how do we, we'll begin with the simplest classification, which is binary. Binary classification is zero, 1, right? How do we predict zero, 1 variable? That's the question, OK? So we have many x variable and many y. x variable, y variable. Many, many different x, and then y is either 0, 0, or maybe 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. Okay? And x, you know, we have many, many different x variables. So the goal right now is to, based on x, let's predict y, or let's classify y, right? whether it's 0 or 1. How do we do it? The simplest way to do it is to use our old friend, which is or less linear regression. Right? So can I run linear regression? Of course I can. It's y equal to beta x plus e. I can still do linear regression. It, the only difference here is that y is either zero, y is either zero or one. But, but I can still do the linear regression. Okay. Now, after I do my linear regression, I have a beta hat. Right. So, for example, you know, y is equal to one plus zero point five x, etc. Right. Based on my beta hat, what is my y hat? Who is my y? Hat? Is y hat beta hat x? In this in this case, no. Why? Because the beta hat x is continuous, right? Assuming x is continuous, okay? We have a continuous. Then beta x is continuous. But our y hat should only be 0 or 1, right? So what should I do? Well, so I have a beta hat x. I write this model. My y is either 0 or 1. But if the prediction is larger than 0 0.5, I'm going to say y equal to 1. If the prediction is smaller than 0.5, I'm going to equal to 0. Right? And the answer is, can you do this? The answer is, yes, you can. Okay? Of course you can. There's no way, uh, there's no reason why you cannot do that. And let's look at an example. Right? Now, this is income of voting data uh, of 200 voters. Remember, voting is kind of, uh, in this case, our very wide variable vote is whether the individual has voted in the last election. So it's whether it's a 0, 1 variable. 1 is voted, 0 is not voted. So I'm going to use income. So let's, let's take a look at the data, right? For, uh, for high income people, the majority of them voted. Uh, for people who did not vote, uh, most of them are low income. So clearly, according to look at this, and clearly the income has some ability to predict whether this person voted or not in the election. So we're going to use income to predict voting. And what I'm going to do is to simply run a linear regression, okay? Vote here, income here, and I get my linear regression results. And you can see that the income is actually statistically significant and has a positive effect on whether you vote. Right. Now, in order to predict, make a prediction of a person is voting or not, suppose I want to predict whether the person at the income of 0 0.5, the median income level, whether, he will, whether she or she will vote or not, 
I will just generate a prediction of the x, uh, beta hat x, which has this value, okay? If the beta hat x is 0.67, then I will predict this person will vote because it's larger than 0.5. If you look at it, we have this kind of graph, right? Here, this is data. The blue one is the true data of whether the person has, has voted or not. This is income. And this red line is the beta hat x, is our estimated linear line. So what we're doing here is if this linear line, right, the estimate beta hat x is larger than 0.5, I'm going to predict this person vote. If it's smaller than 0.5, I'm going to predict this person did not vote. So the, so the yellow dots are my prediction, right? right okay. So I predicted these people, the yellow dots, voted. I predict these people do not vote. And what is this line? This line is separate. Like, so basically, I, I predict everyone below this line did not vote. I predict everyone above this line vote. So this line is called my decision boundary. Okay? It's a boundary that, you know, that generates two different kind of predictions uh, behind and after. And this boundary will be a linear line here because, uh, and this boundary is an income equal to uh, point Seven, right, the 37 percentile of the income. Okay. Right. Now it's a line. Why is a line very simple? If our if our rule is I'm going to predict someone equal to one, if it's the uh, the linear line is larger than uh, the pre the linear prediction is larger than one half, then essentially I'm going to predict every uh, individual with x larger than one half divided by this beta hat to be voting. And I want below that to be not voting. So it's a linear cutoff, right? It's a, it's a cutoff like this, straight cutoff. OK. So is this approach good? Can we rely on linear regression to do classification? Well, uh, the answer is yes, we can, right? Just like we said, yes, you can. But it's not the best way to do it. Right? And I will explain why it's not the best way to do it. But before talking about why it's not the best way to do it, the first, I'm going to introduce the second model. The difference between the second model and the first model is that in the second model, we're going to have probability claim. Now, re recall here, if we, do, if we use linear regression to do classification, can you interpret this red line? This red line is our fit. Can you interpret this red line as, as, a, as a probability of people voting? No, it's not a probability because it can go to infinity, right? It's a straight line, can go above, above one or below zero. So this is not a probability. So what I want is a probability model, okay? probabilistic model that can not only predict whether a person vote or not, but can tell me what is the probability of that person voting. Okay? How do we do that? Right, I want a model. Y equal to, let's say fx, okay? maybe plus e. But I want this model f to have such a, you know, to have such a property that it tells me the probability of y equal to one or y equal to zero, not just the linear line, right? The linear line is not a probability because it can go from infinity negative to probability. So I want something more like a probability. But what's the feature of probability? A probability is always between zero and one, right? If it's a probability, it's between 0 and 1. So how do I get something between 0 and 1? That's the question. Now, if I, have, if I have a probability, right? If I have a probability, if I can successfully estimate the probability of y equal to 1, then the decision is very easy. The decision, again, would be the, if the estimated probability is larger than 0.5, I would say y hat equal to 1. If it's lower than 0.5, I would say y hat equal to 0. So that we all agree. The question is, how do I get this, right? The estimated p hat. Well, it's actually very easy, more easy, you know, easier than you think. Because this is the linear line. This is beta x. And this is between negative infinity and positive infinity. What I want to do is turn this into something between 0 and 1. How do I turn this into something between 0 and 1? I transform, right? I do a feature transform. So I transform my beta, I should not call it feature transform, but I transform this line into something like this, okay? So when it's high, I bring it down below, below one. When it's below zero, I bring it up. 
to above zero, I keep everything be between zero and one, and then I can interpret this as a, as a probability, right? So how do I do this? One way is to define something I will explain, but define something called sigma, and sigma beta x, so we take a linear line, and I'm going to transform that into something that's nonlinear but between zero and one. So this sigma beta x is equal to e to the beta x divided by one plus e to the beta x. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. So it's a simple function transform, right? We're transforming the beta x into this nonlinear form. What is the feature about this nonlinear form? First of all, the larger the beta x, the larger this one, right? Everybody agree? The larger the base, the larger this one. Second, this thing is between zero to one. Everybody agrees? It's never like if, if in the extreme. In, in the event that x going to infinity, and the beta is positive, that this whole thing approaches one, right? If in the in the event that x is negative infinity, then and the beta is larger than zero, this whole thing approaches zero. So it's always between zero and one. So that's what that's what we're going to use. Right? So instead of instead of using beta x, I'm going to transform beta x into this thing. And we have a name for it. It's called the sigmoid function. Okay. So I'm going to say this is the sigmoid function. Right. The sigmoid function sometimes is sometimes called a logistic function. Right. So that's why that brings us to the name for this kind of model is called a logistic regression model. And many of you have already familiar with that whole, right? You have studied in other courses. So this is called a logistic regression model, and this function is called a logistic function or sigmoid function. So I'm going to say, essentially, our model is the probability of y equal to 1 is this sigmoid beta x. That's my probability. That's my model. Clear on that? Now once we define this way, I can turn it into a form maybe you are more familiar with. So if the probability of y equal to 1, I assume, is equal to sigmoid beta x, which is you know e to the beta x, 1 plus e to the beta x, okay? Then I can write it in this way, which is the log of p y equal to 1 divided by 1 minus p y equal to 1 is equal to, oh sorry, what is this equal to? Beta x. Okay. So this now has a linear form. What is this called? It's a very simple name, which is the log odds, right? So the log odds of y equal to 1 is now a beta x function. Okay. Actually, we also have a name. We have the log p1 minus p is some, sometimes also called a logic function. It's called logic function or log odds function. Okay. Right. Looks something like this. Transform the linear into uh, the sigmoid. Sigmoid, by, by its name, actually just means very simple. It just means it's almost like an S, okay? The sigmoid. All right, so how do we, so this is our model then how do we estimate the model, okay? How do I estimate the beta here in this model? Well, uh, any guess how do we estimate it? How do we estimate it? Do OLS? This is not OLS. What is this? We are modeling, what am I actually modeling? I'm modeling the probability of Y conditional X, right? Remember our foundation lecture. When I'm modeling the probability of y condition x, what is the loss function we're using and what is the approach that we're going to use? So we're trying to model, so the difference between this model, the logistic regression model, and the linear regression model is that the linear regression model is not a probabilistic model, but this one is a probabilistic model because we are modeling a probability. The probability is a conditional probability. So remember in our foundation lecture, we talk about if I want to find out the conditional probability 
of y give x, what should I do? I should minimize what? Already, uh, here's some people already answered, right? I should minimize the KL divergence. So in other words, what is, my, what is my model? My model is a hypothesis set containing different distributions, right? So here, specific distribution is something like this. Okay, so that's my specific distribution for the probability. And then I'm going to minimize the KL divergence. And if I minimize KL divergence, that's equivalent to what? Maximizing the likelihood. Okay. Okay. So very easy, very, very good. How do I estimate logistic regression? I estimate it by running MLE. Okay. Very simple. But how do we actually do MLE? Well, you have to write out the log likelihood function, right? So I observe n data points, and my likelihood function is the probability of yi conditional xi given you know, the beta. And then if you write it out, I'll just do it here, but you should be able to. So what is the probability? What is the log likelihood? The log likelihood is the sum of log probability of each y i given x i, right? i from 1 to n, OK? But then what is this? Well, this is, again, if you know, so this is, what this is depends on whether y i, so we see many y i x i, OK? Now, it depends on, for this particular y i, is y equal to 1 or is y equal to 0? If y equal to 1, then this thing is simply the probability of y i equal to 1 conditional x i. But the probability of y equal to 1 conditional x i is simply what? Sigmoid x i beta, right? According to our model. So I basically have sigmoid x i beta here if y is equal to 1. If y equal to 0, what happens? Then we are estimating the probability y equal to 0 given x, which will be y minus the sigma, correct? Because sigma moid is, uh, sorry, sigma moid. The sigma moid function is the probability of equal to 1. So I have 1 minus this if yi is equal to 0. All right, so our total, so the total probability is simply this. We can, we can write the total probability in this way. Log, okay. right, so it's a log, this probability, is equal to the sigma raised to the power of yi. And this thing raised to the power of 1 minus y. Can we write this? Can I do this way? Look, if y equal to 1, then we get this. Because y equal to 1, this becomes 0, and this goes to 1. If y equal to 0, then this goes to 1, and we have this one. OK, so essentially it's a switch, right? So y depends on y equal to 1 or 0, we have either this one or this one. So I can write the probability this way and taking a log. And therefore, we have this expression here. So you know, just in case you want it. Right. But that's not important. Right? You can work, work this out yourself. Basically, the whole process is I will go to write out this log likelihood function, which in the end is a function look like this. And I'm going to choose the beta that maximize this whole function. And using, right, typically, this has, been, this has to, be to, to be done numerically, because there's no analytical solution like ORS. But that's the process of estimating MLE. Right? OK, so there we go. Right? This is our, uh, in summary, uh, and uh, by the way, you don't have to program the actual maximization yourself, because in today, in all statistical packages and software or language you use, you just run a simple logistic regression command. It will give you the results, just like all us. So there's no need to do numerical optimization. But you just have to understand that if you do logistic regression, you need to maximize the likelihood, which means you need to do this numerical optimization. It's just that everything is hidden behind the modern software, right? If you do logistic. Okay, so this is our result, right? We're going to we have some estimate beta hat, and they give us your estimated p hat, and then in the end, I can make a decision. I can say, okay, if this p hat is larger than 0.5, I'm going to declare y equal to one. Otherwise, I'm going to predict y equal to zero. It's very simple. What does the decision boundary look like? We still have a decision boundary. Well, it turns out that uh, if we're going to say, if we're going to declare y equal to 1 if, okay, if this probability is larger than 1 half, 
then it's equivalent to say if the probability of uh, y equal to 1 divided by the probability of y equal to 0 is larger than 1. Okay? It's larger than 1. Right, it's a similar thing. Now, I can take a log here and a log here, right? Log 1, which is what? Which is just 0. Okay, but what is the log p y equal to 1 divided by log p log, uh, log p y equal to 0? What is that? That is a linear x prime beta, just a linear function. So, in other words, I basically declare y equal to 1 if x prime beta is larger than 0. Okay? It's very simple. So, again, we have a cutoff decision boundary like this. Okay? Straight decision boundary. Let's go ahead and try it. Right, we're still going to use the voting data. Vote regression on income. But nowadays, now if you do, it, do this in R, then you use this GLM function. I will explain what GLM, GLM means. But GLM function is used to do logistic regression. All you need to do is to specify the formula, and you say the family is binomial. In this case, we do logistic regression. Again, I'll explain why it's binomial, right? But this is the way you do logistic. And you can say, see that income, again, has a highly significant effect on um, whether the person votes or not. But this, but this coefficient is very different from linear regression because they're different models, OK? Not because if you look at this, this coefficient is much larger, actually, than the linear regression one. But it doesn't mean that this, uh, this model has, has a larger effect. It's just that there are different models. And this is what the prediction look like. Again. Uh, this is the, the blue one is the original uh, data set and now our red curve is our estimated probability of biological regression and you can see that this estimate probability has an S curve like this like sigmoid curve uh, and we're going to I'm going to declare a person who is going to vote if the estimate probability is larger than 0.5 okay? or below if it's not we're going to predict it's not vote so we end up with a decision boundary like this again and the stream boundary is income equal to 0.35. So you look at our result and then compare it with linear regression. What's the difference between the logistic regression and linear regression? The linear regression has a decision boundary, income equal to 0.37. Everything below, now vote, everything above vote, right? The logistic regression has a decision boundary of income equal to 0.35. So even though they look like very different models, in this case, they are giving me very, very similar results. Now, no, the curve looks very different. But what matters here is the decision boundary, right? Because decision boundary is finally how I make my predictions. And the decision boundary is basically 0.37 versus 0.35. So they actually have very little difference in this case. Okay. All right. Now, in general, uh, we can talk about logistic regression and linear regression uh, both, in the, in the case of classification, we can say they are both a kind of approach that is essentially a score function approach, okay? So you can put them both in the general framework, say they both follow a, a, a general approach that models something called a score function. Let's call it score function delta jx, okay? So the linear for the linear regression, what we do is we, we estimate two functions. One is x prime beta, the other is one minus x prime beta. These are the two score functions. And the approach is, I'm going to estimate them and then pick which one is larger. If this is larger than this one, I'm going to say y equal to y. If this is larger than this, then I'm going to say y equal to zero. That's the linear regression approach, okay? Now for logistic regression, our score function is, for zero, I'm going to, for one, I'm going to estimate sigmoid x prime beta. And for zero, I'm going to estimate one minus sigmoid x, uh, x prime beta. And again, which one is larger will determine whether I say, y is 1 or 0. So we can think about them as a sort of like a both following the simple score function approach by defining different functions for different uh, options and comparing them which one is larger, I'm going to declare which. The difference is for logistic regression, our score function has a probability interpretation because this one is between 0 to 1. And for linear regression, our score function has no probability interpretation because it's unbounded. All right, uh, I'm not sure if I have enough time, but let me uh, talk a little bit about why linear regression is not a good idea. In a previous example, we showed that the voting and the income 
on the voting income data, the linear regression and the logic regression seem to produce very similar results, right? Now, um, for, so now I'm going to give you some reason why linear, in, even though that's the case in many situations, linear regression is oftentimes not a good friend if you are trying to do classification problems. And the reason really is linear regression is fundamentally, not for two, for many reasons, but for several reasons. You can certainly say that, you, that probability in interpretation is, is good, so you want a logic regression. But more importantly, linear regression is often not as stable as logic regression. It's easily influenced by outliers when you're trying to do uh, classification. So let me explain. Right? The ideal of um, the problem with linear regression when it comes to doing classification is that the linear regression uses L2 loss function. And you will see that the use of loss function is actually important. The key difference between linear and logistic regression here is the use of loss function, as it turned out. Uh, I don't have time to fully explain today. I will do it next class. But today, let me end my class saying that linear regression is L2 loss. And this means that linear regression is not very good for classification. Why? Let's think about it. If we are, if we are doing a continuous Y, okay? So if Y is something like this, and we have a data, like this right now um, if my prediction if my data here and my predictions here now that's a very bad prediction so I'm going to say sorry so this is not the true y this is my y hat or you can think about this as beta hat x now if beta x look like sorry linear okay beta x and we have a bunch of data now if our beta has look like this then for this data point, it's okay because the error is small, but for these data points, it's very bad, or at least for this one, it's very bad, right? The error is large. Now, the error is large, but we have L2 means that the error is really squared. So the larger distance gets especially penalized when we're doing linear regression. So this is good, right? This is desirable if our y is continuous. But what if our y is 0, 1? In the case of zero, 01, then we basically have data points like this, right? A bunch of data here that's all one. And the zero, there's a bunch of data like this, right? Okay? Or something like that. And then I'm going to fit a linear regression, a linear line, that will go something like this, okay? Now remember our rule, when we do linear regression, how do we actually predict y? Well, we'll compare our prediction, I'll compare this beta hat x with 0.5, right? So if it's larger than 0.5, I say it's 1. If it's smaller than 0.5, I say it's 0. That's our rule, right? So in this case, look, this is my prediction for, um, uh, suppose this is data, right? Here's a, here we have a data point. For this data point, my beta x is here. And this is the difference, this is the e, right? Okay? Is this E a problem? Should we worry about this E, this error? No, because even though my prediction, my beta hat x is here, my prediction of y hat is, my y hat is correct, right? Because it is above 0.5, so I will correctly say y hat is equal to one. So this is not a problem, right? However, in linear regression, because we're minimizing the L2, this becomes a problem, especially if it becomes a huge problem because it's going to be square. So in, in other words, linear regression trying very hard to make this straight line come very close to zero or one. It cannot go above zero a lot. It cannot, it cannot go above one a lot. It cannot go below zero a lot. Otherwise, the error gets penalized a lot. But we shouldn't care about that because if it's above one a lot, I don't care as long as I have this rule which says above one, you know, both 0.5 are classified as one, then I get the correct classification. You know, it doesn't matter that my beta hat x is very large or just slightly large, right? In fact, you can say if my beta x is very large, you know, in my model, it means that we are very confident that this thing sh y hat should be equal to one. So it's actually confidence. We're very confident that, that you know, this is equal to one. 
But however, in linear regression, this so-called confidence is, is actually penalized because it has a lot, very large E, right? And that's essentially the problem of using linear regression for classification purposes. This is a, you know, probably a nicer illustration than my own drawing, right? Here I have x1 and x2 in two dimensions, and my y has two values, red or blue, okay? Red or blue. Then uh, for this data set, I can run a linear regression and I can run a logistic regression. They give me exactly almost the same decision boundary, okay? So this is the decision boundary, which says here blue, here red. However, if I change my data set to something like this, where I have a bunch of blue lines, blue points here, then the linear and the logistic regression behave wildly different. The logistic regression is still very good. It's the, it's the green line here. But the linear regression will become this purple line would shift this way because for the linear regression, these far away points become a problem. It's going to penalize the error, right? So it will try very hard to fit them, but they shouldn't be a problem. So that's really the issue with linear regression because it's using the L2 loss function that tries very hard that, that doesn't, it's, it's a, so the L2 loss function, in other words, is not suitable for doing classification. So here the fundamental problem is not linear regression. The, funda the fundamental problem is using the L2 loss function. Um, next class, because I think we're running out of time, but next class I will show you that fundamentally, okay, our logistic regression uses a loss function something like this. And the linear regression has now two that looks something like this, okay? And it turns out that this part is really, really bad. So it's not a good loss function. So, but, but I don't have time today. And we'll continue last, next time. Uh, I'll explain why linear regression, you know, the whole idea of this loss function not being suitable for classification. Uh, and we'll talk more on this topic, okay? So let's finish today.